The Galactic Empire made a fatal mistake when they attacked the human colony of New Eden. Thousands of innocent civilians were slaughtered in a devastating orbital bombardment, their homes and lives reduced to ashes. But one man escaped the carnage, carrying with him the truth behind the Empire's motives and the key to humanity's survival. Intelligence officer David Kennedy fled the destruction aboard an FTL scout ship, the sole survivor of New Eden. The data drive in his possession revealed a chilling reality. The Empire had discovered humanity's secret network of colony worlds, hidden deep in a remote sector of the galaxy. For centuries, the Terran Alliance had been quietly expanding, building their strength with advanced jump drive technology and AI-assisted manufacturing. New Eden was merely an outpost, a glimpse of the true might of the human civilization. The unprovoked attack on New Eden was a declaration of war, one that the Terran Alliance would not ignore. At the hidden capital of Avalon, Admiral Elena Stryker, Supreme Commander and brilliant tactician, received Kennedy's intelligence and set in motion a multi-phase plan to dismantle the Empire. She knew that the key to victory lay in the subjugated alien species, the Crixians, Sithari, and Edosians, who chafed under the Empire's brutal rule. Covert operatives were dispatched to gather critical data and forge alliances, while Kennedy sought out Yaxa, a sympathetic Edosian diplomat who could rally his people to the human cause. But the Empire was not idle. Emperor Zorak, cunning and ruthless, saw the emerging human threat as an opportunity to crush rebellion and tighten his grip on power. He ordered his cyborg enforcer, General Kalos, to assemble a massive armada and prepare for total war. The galaxy held its breath as both sides mobilized for the inevitable conflict, unaware that the true extent of human military might had yet to be revealed. In the shadows, the Terran Alliance had been preparing for this day, developing devastating weapons and positioning itself to strike at the heart of the Empire. The battle for the galaxy's future had begun, and humanity would fight not just for its own survival, but for the freedom of every species under the Empire's tyrannical rule. The Galactic Empire was about to learn the hard way what happens when you mess with the wrong species. As the Terran Alliance mobilized its forces, Admiral Elena Stryker's holographic image flickered to life in the darkened briefing room. Her intense look swept over the assembled team of elite operatives, lingering on the striking figure of Ava Blackwood. We have a critical mission for you, Stryker said, her voice crisp and authoritative. Infiltrate key Imperial installations. Sabotage their war machine from within. Sow chaos in their ranks. You have the best stealth tech and hacking tools we can provide. Make them count. Blackwood nodded, her green eyes glinting with commitment. We won't let you down, Admiral. The spies dispersed to their targets, slipping past Imperial defenses with preternatural skill. On a sprawling shipyard orbiting Gamma Crucis IV, Blackwood's team materialized from the shadows, their adrenalized combat frames wrapped in chameleon cloaks. Moving with fluid precision, they attached sequence fission charges to the reactor cores of half-built destroyers, turning the docks into a constellation of miniature suns. Similar scenes unfolded across Imperial space as the Terran saboteurs unleashed their mayhem. Plasma relays overloaded, sending once mighty battleships drifting helplessly. Exabytes of disinformation flooded command networks, blinding the eyes of the enemy. On the bridge of his flagship, General Kalos raged at the inexplicable malfunctions, his cybernetic fists leaving dents in the bulkheads. While the Empire floundered, the Alliance pushed its secret weapons projects into overdrive. In hidden Kuiper Belt labs, Xeno engineers dissected captured juggernaut tanks, weaving captured alien alloys into the sinews of lethal new war machines. Nanoforges hummed with ominous purpose as they spat out rivers of programmable matter building ever more sophisticated engines of death. The first clashes of fleets came in the Arcturus sector, as Imperial battlegroups surged into human space. But instead of the expected colonies, they found themselves engulfed in storms of quantum entangled minds and self-replicating hunter-killers. Genetically enhanced Terran pilots danced through the radioactive clouds in their nimble X-fighters, their synapses and reflexes boosted to the brink of human possibility. Hardened by decades of war games fought in crushing, simulated gravities, they ripped through the Imperial vanguard with merciless efficiency. 
Praetor Zal and his Obsidian Legion made planet fall on Arcadia in a storm of blood and fire, their nerve-shredded loyalists whipped into a berserker frenzy by neuroactive stimulants. Disdaining subtlety or mercy, they butchered their way through fleeing crowds, painting their sigil in the ash of burning cities. But even as Arcadia wept, the Alliance prepared its repost. Stryker's voice was cold as the void as she gave the order, consigning millions of cloned Deltarian mercenaries to the meat grinder. Grown in secret vats and neurally imprinted with the skills of history's greatest heroes, they charged into the teeth of Zayal's defenses, buying time with their engineered bodies. In the skies above, Krythos and his Scythery exiles burst from warp in a micro-jump ambush, their star-forged hulls absorbing the fire of a dozen dreadnoughts. Electron lances and graviton beams filled space with eye-searing brilliance as the obsidian point defenses opened up in blistering fusillades. But even as the Imperial ships wheeled to meet the new threat, swarms of relativistic kill vehicles, no larger than motes of dust, slipped through their shields. The fundamental forces answered Terran science, reducing decks and bulkheads to bursts of plasma. In the aftermath, Arcadia was a graveyard, its continents pitted with the scars of apocalyptic weaponry. The price had been terrible, but the Empire was learning that their slaves were not as helpless as they believed. As fresh Terran fleets mustered for the counteroffensive and rebel worlds lit the sparks of insurrection, it was becoming clear that Zorak's crusade might be his last. The dust had barely settled on Arcadia when Admiral Stryker called an emergency briefing. Captain Nolan Steele stood at attention, his battle-scarred armor a testament to countless covert missions. Around him, the elite members of Phantom Squad waited with coiled intensity. Intelligence confirms our worst fears, Stryker's hologram flickered. The Empire's terraforming network is the keystone of their war machine. We're going to take it out. Steele's mind raced, calculating angles of attack. A direct assault would be suicide, Admiral. Agreed. That's why you're going in quiet. Stryker's eyes gleamed. We have a Crixian defector, Dr. Zathrai. He's provided access codes to their facilities across multiple systems. The briefing room erupted in a flurry of activity as mission parameters were uploaded. Steele studied the holographic displays, memorizing layout schematics and security protocols. Hours later, cloaked dropships pierced the atmosphere of Nexus Prime, home to one of the Empire's largest terraforming complexes. Steel's team emerged from stealth pods, their nanofiber suits blending seamlessly with the shadows. Zulu team, infiltrate the Western Quadrant, Steel subvocalized. Echo, take the East. Rendezvous at the Central Core in 15. They moved like ghosts through the sprawling facility. Imperial guards fell silently to monofilament garrots and nerve toxin darts. At last, they converged on the massive atmospheric processors. Plant the charges, Steele ordered. Quantum resonance yield set to maximum. As his team worked, the captain's enhanced hearing picked up a commotion from the nearby command center. He crept closer, enhanced optics zooming in on a hollow screen. What he saw made his blood run cold. Confirmed attacks on Nexus Prime, Helios the Sex, and Nova Terra, and panicked officer reported, were losing whole agricultural sectors. Steele allowed himself a grim smile. Phantom Squad wasn't alone in this operation. Across Imperial space, other Alliance strike teams were hitting their targets simultaneously. Charges set, his second-in-command reported. Two minutes to detonation. They exfiltrated with seconds to spare. From the safety of their cloaked ship, Steele watched as blossoming explosions shattered the massive agridomes. Tons of genetically modified crops withered instantly in the vacuum of space. Phase one complete, he reported to Stryker, moving to secondary targets. But even as the Empire reeled from this devastating blow, new dangers were brewing. On the Imperial throne world of Axiom Prime, a gathering of shadowy figures convened in an opulent chamber. Admiral Zalaron, his face a mask of cold dedication, addressed the assembled cabal. Gentlemen, the time has come. Zorak's incompetence can no longer be tolerated. Are we agreed? A chorus of assent echoed through the room. As plans for a coup took shape, the true battle for control of the galaxy was only beginning. The shockwaves of Admiral Zalaron's coup rippled across Imperial space, 
leaving chaos in their wake. On the Terran carrier Defiant, Admiral Stryker's hologram flickered to life before a squad of battle-hardened operatives. Intelligence confirms the Empire is eating itself alive, she said, her voice tight with urgency. It's time to fan the flames of rebellion. Major Torin, you're up. Jack Torin nodded grimly, his cybernetic eye glowing faintly. Within hours, his stealth shuttle pierced Adosha Prime's atmospheric defenses, cloaking systems rendering it invisible to Imperial scanners. In the bowels of the capital's labor district, Torin met his contact. Yaksa, the Adosian rebel leader, materialized from the shadows, his scaled skin glistening in the dim light of the underground meeting place. You have proof? Yaksa hissed, mandibles clicking with anticipation. Torin activated a hollow projector, the air filled with gut wrenching images, mass graves on Crixian worlds, Sithari dissidents being vaporized, entire Edosian cities reduced to ash. Yaksa's compound eyes widened. By the void, our people must see this. Within days, the evidence spread like wildfire through encrypted networks. Edosian factory workers downed tools. Dock laborers sabotaged imperial freighters. The streets erupted in protests that quickly turned violent. On the Crixian homeworld, Hive Queen Zathrak received a coded transmission from her Terran allies. Moments later, pheromone-laced orders pulsed through the hive mind. Across a dozen systems, Crixian drones turned on their Imperial masters. Organic starships, freed from chemical control, tore through defense fleets with bioweapons that melted durasteel like wax. Meanwhile, on Karada, Admiral Zalaran's coup reached its bloody climax. The Imperial Palace blazed with weapons fire as Scarlet Praetorians clashed with rebel troops. In his sealed bunker, Emperor Zorak raged at tactical displays, showing system after system falling to insurrection. Deploy the Omega Arsenal, he shrieked, spittle flying. Burn it all! But before the order could be carried out, space itself seemed to tear open. Terran X Corps operatives materialized within the bunker, their augmented bodies moving with inhuman speed. Praetorian guards fell in seconds, reduced to smoking husks by Vance particle beams. Zorak fumbled for a detonator, madness in his eyes. You cannot... His words were cut short as an X-Corps commando's fist pulverized his skull. The detonator clattered to the floor, inert. As news of the Emperor's death spread, Imperial forces fractured. Some pledged loyalty to Zalaron, others to local warlords. Many simply deserted fleeing from the vengeance of newly liberated populations. Admiral Stryker watched the reports flood in, her face impassive. The Empire was crumbling, but the war was far from won. New threats loomed on the horizon. Rogue Imperial admirals with planet killers, Zalaron's hardline faction, and the terrifying possibility of Omega weapons in the wrong hands. She toggled her calm. All fleets prepare for Phase 2. We're taking the fight to the heart of Imperial space. Space. Stryker's eyes narrowed as she surveyed the holographic star map. It's time to deploy our ace. The command deck of the Alliance flagship Defiant hummed with tension as Stryker initiated a secure transmission. Commander Kane, you are cleared to execute Operation Shatterpoint. Light years away, Commander Marcus Kane stood before the massive control array of the tectonic-class Planet Cracker Cannon. His fingers hovered over the activation sequence, a bead of sweat trickling down his temple. Target locked, Xenos-4, the AI intoned, awaiting final authorization. Kellen hesitated, his mind racing with the implications of what he was about to do. Thousands of lives hung in the balance. Not just Imperial soldiers, but conscripted laborers from a dozen subjugated races. Commander, Stryker's voice crackled through the comm. I know the weight of this decision, but remember what's at stake. This is our chance to break the Empire's back. Kane's teeth clenched. With a deep breath, he initiated the firing sequence. The massive rail accelerator array thrummed to life, channeling unimaginable energies. A blinding lance of gravitons erupted from the cannon's maw, streaking across space at near light speed. On Xenos 4, panicked Imperial officers shouted contradictory orders as they scrambled to evacuate personnel and critical equipment. But it was too late. 
The graviton beam struck with apocalyptic force. The moon's crust buckled and fractured, magma boiling up through widening fissures. Fusion reactors destabilized, adding their fury to the cascade of destruction. From his command post, Kane watched the sensor readouts in horrified fascination. Xenos 4 shuddered, great chunks of its mass breaking away as tidal forces overwhelmed its structural integrity. Within hours, the shipyard moon was nothing but an expanding cloud of superheated debris. Confirmed kill, the AI reported dispassionately. Target Xenos 4 has been neutralized. Kyan slumped in his chair, the enormity of what he'd done washing over him. How many had died in those fiery moments? How many Crixian drones, their lives snuffed out in an instant? But there was no time for reflection. New alerts flashed across his screens. The Empire was striking back. On Terra Nova, Captain Jared Armstrong of the 501st Starfighter Wing rocketed through the upper atmosphere, his X-Wing's engines screaming. Behind him, the sky burned with the contrails of incoming Imperial drop pods. All wings, form up, he barked into the comm. We've got heavy hitters inbound. Engage at will. The air around him erupted in plasma fire as cyborg Edosian Huskarls unleashed salvos from their shoulder-mounted launchers. Armstrong's targeting computer flickered and died, overloaded by the sheer volume of incoming fire. Sithari uplink active, his co-pilot reported. The captured telepath's neural implants interfacing directly with the X-Wing systems. Armstrong's awareness expanded, melding with his fighter. He barrel-rolled through a hail of missiles, his shots finding their marks with uncanny precision. Imperial gunships exploded in flames, raining debris on the besieged city below. But for every enemy he downed, two more took its place. Gene-spliced Crixian Scytherborgs swarmed over the colony's orbital platforms, their chitinous armor shrugging off small arms fire. This is more than a counterattack, Armstrong realized with growing dread. They're after something specific. Deep in the Gorgon Rift, alarms blared as Imperial hunter-killer probes closed in on the hidden planet cracker array. Major Aaliyah Staros and her X-Corps team moved with augmented speed, their cybernetic enhancements pushed to the limit. Incoming, Staros shouted as a shimmering distortion grid into an Imperial stealth cruiser. They're on a collision course. The air crackled with weapons fire as X-Corps battlesuits clashed with Imperial shock troops. Disruptor beams sliced through armor plating, while power blades sparked against energy shields. Staros vaulted over a fallen comrade, her augmented muscles propelling her impossible distances. She landed on the back of an Imperial battlesuit, driving an electrified blade deep into its power core. But even as she fought, Staros knew it was a delaying action at best. The enemy cruiser loomed ever closer, its hull overflowing with singularity warheads. We can't stop it, she realized. Her team was being whittled down, second by second. There was only one option left. Steros activated her emergency transmitter. This is Major Steros. Gorgon Rift is compromised, initiating Scorched Earth Protocol. She turned to her remaining squad. It's been an honor for Terra. As one, they charged the Imperial cruiser, their augmented bodies becoming living weapons. In a final, desperate act, they breached the hull, detonating their own power cores in a chain reaction that consumed both ships in a blinding fireball. Staros's last transmission cut through the static. Array damaged, but intact. Victory at any... Then silence. On the bridge of the Defiant, Admiral Stryker bowed her head. The war had entered a new phase, bloodier and more desperate than ever before. But there was no turning back now. All fleets, she ordered, her voice steady. Prepare for phase three. All fleets, Stryker ordered, her voice steady. Prepare for phase three. The Defiance Bridge erupted into action. Tactical officers fed coordinates to waiting strike teams, while comm specialists encrypted last-minute intelligence briefs. Stryker's eyes never left the holographic display of Karada, its fortified core pulsing an angry red. Commander Hassan, she said, activating a secure channel. You have a go. Light years away, Arun Hassan nodded to his X-Corps Vanguard team. They stood in the cramped hold of a stealth insertion craft, bodies taut with anticipation. Each wore the latest prototype, phase displacer harness, 
untested tech that would either get them inside Zalaron's bunker or scatter their atoms across half the system. Remember, Hassan said, his voice low, we're ghosts until we're not. Soraya, you take point once we're in. His wife flashed a predatory grin, nanoblades glinting at her wrist. The shuttle's pilot counted down, and Hassan felt the familiar lurch of phase shift. Reality twisted. For a heartbeat, Hassan's consciousness fragmented across a thousand parallel universes. Then, with a bone-jarring snap, they rematerialized inside the bunker's command center. Chaos erupted instantly. Cyborg sentries, caught mid-stride, whirled to face the intruders. Laser fire sliced through the air, scorching bulkheads and vaporizing delicate equipment. Soraya was already moving, a blur of augmented speed and lethal grace. Her nanoblades sang, parting armor and synthetic flesh with equal ease. Two sentries fell before they could raise their weapons, bisected by precision strikes. Hassan's team fanned out, pulse rifles spitting hypervelocity rounds, the air filled with ozone and the screech of dying machinery. A sentry's plasma bolt grazed Hussein's shoulder, searing through his armor. He grunted, pivoting to put three rounds through the cyborg's optic cluster. Clear, Soraya called, standing over the twitching remains of Zalaron's honor guard. But the admiral himself was nowhere to be seen. Hassan's enhanced hearing picked up the faint whine of capacitors charging. Down, he roared, diving for cover. The world went white. Hassan's noise dampeners struggled to compensate as antimatter containment alarms shrieked. Through the ringing in his ears, he heard a calm voice. Kyrissa, their Sithari telempath. The Imperial initiates failsafe protocols, she said, eyes unfocused. Total annihilation imminent. Hassan didn't hesitate. Evac now. Phase shift in three. As one, the team activated their harnesses. Reality blurred once more, and they found themselves back aboard their waiting shuttle. Behind them, deep within Karada's core, Zalaron's bunker imploded in a burst of unimaginable energies. Hassan sagged against a bulkhead, adrenaline ebbing. Status report. Zalaron escaped, Soraya said, her voice tight with frustration. But we've crippled his command structure. As their shuttle raced to rendezvous with the Defiant, reports flooded in from across Imperial space. Warlords vied for supremacy, turning their guns on each other as often as Alliance forces. On a dozen worlds, the carefully woven tapestry of Imperial control began to unravel. Stryker's voice crackled over the comms. Well done, x -Corps. But we can't ease up now. Our next target is Klendathu. Hassan exchanged a grim look with Soraya. The Crixian homeworld. If they could break Imperial control there, they might finally turn the tide of this war. But at what cost? As the Defiance fighter bays disgorged swarms of attack craft, Hassan allowed himself a moment of quiet reflection. The real bloodshed was only beginning. Beginning, the real bloodshed was only just starting. Admiral Stryker's voice cut through the din of the Defiance Bridge. All hands, prepare for jump to the Dralkath reaches. The starfield outside blurred as the ship tore through subspace. When reality reasserted itself, a swirling maelstrom of plasma and gas clouds filled the viewscreens. Sensors are useless, muttered the tactical officer. Those nebulae are scrambling everything. Stryker's eyes narrowed. Then we'll have to go in blind. Darkwatch Squadron, you're up. In the launch bay, Captain Aiden Cross climbed into the cockpit of his Raptor Shadow Fighter. The experimental craft hummed with scarcely controlled energy, its stealth systems already engaged. Remember, he said to his squad, we're ghosts until we're not. Stay sharp. The bay doors opened, revealing the swirling chaos of the Dralkath reaches. Cross felt a familiar lurch as his fighter engaged its phase transdimensional drive. For a heartbeat, reality seemed to split apart. They rematerialized deep within the nebula. Imperial hunter-killer drones drifted past, oblivious to their presence. Cross's HUD lit up with targeting data as his EM scrambler drones went to work. Dark Watch 2, hit that Atmo tank, he ordered. Three and four, take out those repair facilities. Silent explosions bloomed in the distance as Imperial infrastructure crumbled. Cross dove towards a half-constructed battlecruiser. 
his fighter's nanovirus payload primed. Uploading now, he reported. Let's see how they like their ships turned to scrap. As Darkwatch wreaked havoc, another drama unfolded light years away. Fleet Admiral Ruthar stood before a holographic display of his kill sphere, a massive array of weaponized planetoids and purge torpedoes. The humans will learn the price of defiance, he snarled. Initiate launch sequence. But as his armada lumbered into position, alarms blared. Space itself seemed to twist and tear as Alliance Gravitic kill sats detonated along their vector. Hruthar watched in horror as his carefully orchestrated strike dissolved into chaos. Ships collided, their nav systems scrambled. The kill sphere's ordnance, now unguided, rained down upon his own vessels. Evasive maneuvers, he bellowed, but it was too late. Antimatter detonations chained across his fleet, reducing proud Imperial warships to expanding debris fields. Hruthar barely made it to an escape pod, his claws digging into the padding as violent shockwaves battered the tiny craft. Through the viewport, he watched his dreams of conquest literally go up in flames. But even as the Alliance celebrated this victory, a new threat loomed. Deep within an uncharted system, the ancient dreadnought known as the Iron Ark stirred to life, its dark lances pulsed with forbidden energies, while rift gates along its hull crackled with the power to tear reality asunder. Gavin Hunt and his Void Blade squad tracked the behemoth through slip space, their prototype shunt keys allowing them to ride the very currents of interdimensional space. They emerged in the Alpha Centauri system, the Iron Ark's massive form silhouetted against a crimson sun. This is it, Hunt growled. Suit up for EVA. We end this now. The Void Blades materialized on the Iron Ark's hull, phase shredder lances carving through layers of hardened alloys. Imperial crew in vac suits swarmed to meet them, disruptor fire lighting up the void. Hunt ducked under a wild swing, his molecular edge tool slicing through his attacker's suit. He fought his way towards the main bridge, knowing time was running out. Inside the Iron Arc's command center, frantic technicians worked to initiate the final firing sequence. Hunt burst through the airlock, his squad fanning out behind him. For Terra, he roared, entropy fire blazing from his weapons. The ship bucked and shuddered as its space-time breach sequences activated. Hunt dove for the main control panel, his edge tools reconfiguring circuitry at the molecular level. Warnings flashed across every screen. The rift gates were destabilizing, threatening to tear the ship apart. Hunt gritted his teeth against the searing feedback coursing through his body. It's done, he gasped. Get us out of here! As the Void Blades retreated, the Iron Arc imploded in a silent burst of twisted space-time. The threat was neutralized, but the cost had been high. Back on the Defiant, Admiral Stryker surveyed the latest intelligence reports. With the Iron Arc destroyed, the path to Ultima Karata lay open. The final push against the Imperial Throne World could begin. But as she issued orders for the assault, Stryker couldn't shake a growing sense of unease. They had come so far sacrifice so much. What price would victory ultimately demand? In the Defiance medbay, Aaliyah Steros watched the preparations through pain-clouded eyes. Her body, more machine now than flesh, hummed with new augmentations. She flexed a cybernetic hand, feeling strength flow through unfamiliar circuits. They'll need you out there soon, the medic said, adjusting her IV. Aaliyah nodded, her mind already racing with tactical simulations. The Empire was on its heels, but a cornered beast was often the most dangerous. As the Defiance engines spooled up for the jump to Ultima Karata, she knew the real test still lay ahead. Ahead. As the Defiance engines spooled up for the jump to Ultima Karata, she knew the real test still lay ahead. The transition to real space hit Aaliyah like a physical blow. Alarms blared as the Defiance sensors registered the chaos engulfing Ultima Karata. The planet's orbital defenses blazed, filling space with a web of deadly energy. All hands, battle stations! Admiral Stryker's voice cut through the din. x corps prepare for orbital insertion. Aaliyah pushed herself to her feet, her new cybernetic limbs responding with fluid precision. She joined the stream of soldiers rushing to the drop pods, her mind already processing tactical data fed through her neural interface. 
The bay doors opened, revealing a hellscape of fire and twisted metal. Plasma storms raged between colliding capital ships, while swarms of smaller craft danced deadly ballets amidst the debris. Aaliyah's pod rocketed into the maelstrom, jinking and weaving to avoid the hail of fire from Imperial defenses. Groundside, Colonel Draken led his X Corps shock troops through the smoldering ruins of what had once been Praetorian Gate. The air was thick with smoke and the acrid stench of burning synthetics. A Huskarl warband emerged from the haze, vibro axes howling. Push forward, Draken roared, his augmented muscles propelling him into the fray. His monofilament blades sliced through armor and flesh with equal ease, leaving a trail of bisected foes in his wake. Nearby, Major Steros limped forward, one arm hanging useless at her side. She gritted her teeth against the pain, focusing instead on the explosive charges strapped to her chest. A cyborg purifier zealot loomed before her, its augmented frame dwarfing her own. For Terra, she whispered, thumbing the detonator. The world went white. In orbit, Admiral Stryker's flagship Indomitable traded savage blows with the Imperial dreadnought Deathbringer. The void between them crackled with arcane energies as dimensional lances and subatomic disruptors tore at the fabric of space itself. Shields at critical, a bridge officer shouted. One more hit and... Redirect power from life support, Stryker ordered, her eyes never leaving the tactical display. Charge the planet cracker cannons. We end this now. As the two titans clashed, smaller dramas unfolded across the battlefield. Captain Armstrong's 501st X-Wing squadron screamed through the upper atmosphere, their targeting matrices guided by the eerie precision of Sithari telepaths. They dove towards a cluster of Scytherborg deployment centers, proton torpedoes finding their marks with unerring accuracy. Deep within the labyrinthine corridors of Zorak's palace, Jack Torrin's infiltrators raced against time. They half-carried, half-dragged the wounded form of Yaxa, the Adotian rebel leader. We're almost there, Torrin grunted, shouldering aside a fallen beam. Just hold on a little longer. Behind them, the ominous countdown of antimatter charges ticked relentlessly towards zero. Outside the palace walls, Ava Blackwood's deep strike team engaged Ankarath's rogue Sitherborg legions. The air was thick with weapons fire and the scream of dying machines. Blackwood's armor was scorched and dented, but her eyes burned with unshakable focus as she lined up another shot. Keep them contained, she shouted over the din. We can't let a single one escape into the civilian sectors. As the battle raged across Ultima Karata's surface and skies, the tide began to turn. Imperial defense grids faltered under the relentless assault of Gavin Hunt's hunter-killer teams. The Deathbringer's void shields finally collapsed under the Indomitable's onslaught, and in the smoldering ruins of Zorak's throne room, Colonel Draken faced the wounded but still deadly form of Fleet Admiral Hruther. It's over, Hruther, Draken said, circling warily. Your empire is finished. The Imperial Admiral snarled, dark energies crackling along his cybernetically enhanced frame. Then let it burn with me! They clashed in a blur of superhuman speed and strength. Augmented flesh and grafted technology pushed to their limits. Sparks flew as Draken's monoblade met Hruthar's energy claws. For a moment, they seemed evenly matched. Then Hruthar's unstable mutagenics began to falter. His movements grew erratic, his strikes less precise. Draken pressed his advantage, driving the Imperial back step by step. With a final decisive thrust, he impaled Hruthar upon the shattered remnants of an Imperial battle standard. As Hruthar's lifeless body slumped to the ground, a hush fell over the battlefield. The last echoes of gunfire faded, replaced by an eerie stillness. Draken stood amid the wreckage of an empire, the weight of victory settling heavily upon his shoulders. In orbit, Admiral Stryker surveyed the aftermath of the battle. The Indomitable's hull was scarred and buckled, but she had survived. As reports began to flood in from across the sector, Stryker allowed herself a moment of quiet reflection. They had won, but at a staggering cost. Entire worlds lay in ruins. The Scythari kindreds had been decimated, and the full extent of the Crixian gene cankers spread was yet unknown. The work ahead would be monumental, but for the first time in generations, there was hope. 
Commander Hassan found Soraya amid the smoking rubble of what had once been Karada's central plaza. They embraced silently, words inadequate to express the maelstrom of emotions they felt. Around them, other survivors began to emerge, shell-shocked but alive. As the dust settled on Ultima Karada, the first tentative steps towards a new galactic order began. But even as the Alliance celebrated its hard-won victory, pockets of fanatical Imperial resistance remained. And in the vast, uncharted reaches of space, new threats lurked, waiting for their moment to strike. The dust settled on Ultima Karada, revealing a landscape forever altered. Admiral Stryker stood on the bridge of the Indomitable, her eyes fixed on the holographic display of the ravaged planet below. Reports streamed in from across the sector, each one a testament to the staggering cost of victory. Admiral, a communications officer called out, we're receiving a priority transmission from Colonel Draken. Stryker nodded and Draken's battle-worn face materialized before her. Report, Colonel. The last pockets of organized resistance have been neutralized, Draken said, his voice tight with exhaustion. But the real work is just beginning. Understood. I'm initiating Protocol Aegis. We need to move quickly to stabilize the region. Within hours, the wheels of diplomacy began to turn. Stryker convened an emergency summit aboard the Indomitable, bringing together representatives from across the fractured galaxy. The Crixian Hive Queens arrived in bio-ships that pulsed with alien life. Yaxa, still bearing the scars of his ordeal, led the Adotian delegation. Even a handful of Imperial worlds, seeing the writing on the wall, sent envoys to sue for peace. For days the negotiations raged. Tempers flared as ancient grudges and fresh wounds threatened to derail the process. But slowly, painstakingly, a framework began to emerge. Stryker's steady hand guided the talks, her strategic mind finding compromises where none seemed possible. On the seventh day, the Interspecies Coalition was born. The document they signed was a masterpiece of political engineering, a delicate balance of autonomy and mutual defense that bound the disparate factions together. As the ink dried, Stryker turned to Draken. You have a new assignment, Colonel. I'm appointing you military governor of the liberated territories. Draken's eyes widened. Admiral, I'm a soldier, not a... You're what we need right now, Stryker cut him off. Someone who understands the horrors we've faced and the price of failure. Before Draken could protest further, Alarms blared throughout the ship. A junior officer rushed to Stryker's side, his face pale. Admiral, we're receiving distress calls from multiple Edotian colonies. It's the Purifiers. They've launched a massive assault. Stryker's eyebrows furrowed. Get me Captain Cross. Within minutes, Cross's hologram flickered to life. Dark Watch is ready to deploy, Admiral. This is a stealth operation, Captain. Your primary targets are Ancraft's command structure and uplink nodes. Take Carissa with you. Her telepathic abilities may prove crucial. As Cross's team prepared for insertion, another crisis erupted. Commander Hassan's voice crackled over the comms, heavy with urgency. Admiral, we've got a situation on the Adosian homeworld. Minister Zath Nai and General Vajkar are on the brink of all-out civil war. We've detected antimatter signatures beneath the capital. Stryker's mind raced, weighing options and potential outcomes. Deploy x Corps immediately, contain the situation by any means necessary, but prioritize securing those warheads. For days, the newly formed coalition teetered on the brink of collapse. Cross's Dark Watch operatives waged a shadow war against Ancrath's cyborg legions. Their victories measured in silent assassinations and severed data links. On the Adotian homeworld, Hassan's troops fought street by street racing against time to prevent Armageddon. In the midst of the chaos, a different kind of battle raged. Stryker worked tirelessly, brokering deals and calling in favors to keep the fragile peace from shattering. Every compromise was a knife's edge, every concession a calculated risk. Slowly, agonizingly, the immediate threats were contained. Cross's team eliminated Ancraft's key lieutenants, leaving his forces in disarray. Hassan secured the antimatter warheads, averting planetary destruction by mere minutes. The Adotian factions, exhausted and chastened, agreed to a power-sharing arrangement under coalition oversight. As an uneasy calm settled over the sector, 
Stryker turned her attention to the monumental task of rebuilding. Crixian scientists, their insectoid bodies humming with barely contained energy, set to work reverse engineering captured Imperial tech. Massive refugee convoys began the long journey home, guided by coalition peacekeepers. But even as hope flickered to life across a thousand worlds, a new shadow loomed on the horizon. Reports began to trickle in, at first dismissed as tall tales or sensor glitches, entire human outposts vanishing without a trace. Stryker studied the reports, a chill creeping down her spine as she recognized a pattern in the seemingly random disappearances. She summoned Ava Blackwood to her ready room. The young officer stood at attention, her cybernetic enhancements gleaming under the ship's lights. I have a special assignment for you, Lieutenant, Stryker said, her voice low. Something that requires your unique skill set. Blackwood listened intently as Stryker laid out the mission parameters. A hand-picked team of x corps cyber sleuths and Crixian subspace trackers. Full autonomy and unlimited resources. A mandate to follow the trail wherever it led. As Blackwood saluted and turned to leave, Stryker called out one final warning. Be careful out there, Lieutenant. I have a feeling we're about to uncover something far beyond our understanding. Blackwood nodded grimly, already formulating strategies as she strode from the room. Behind her, Admiral Stryker turned back to the star charts, her eyes scanning the vastness of space. Somewhere out there, an ancient and terrifying force was stirring, and the fragile peace they had fought so hard to achieve hung in the balance. Blackwood's team emerged from slipspace, their stealth corvette materializing in the shadow of a gas giant. The ship's sensors swept the system, searching for anomalies. Another dead end, muttered Krixva, the Krixian subspace tracker. His mandibles clicked in frustration as he studied the readouts. Blackwood frowned, her cybernetic eye whirring as it processed the data. No, there's something here. Look at the quantum fluctuations in Sector 7. As the team focused their scans, a distortion rippled through space-time. Reality seemed to fold in on itself, revealing a massive structure that defied comprehension. Its geometry shifted and warped, hurting the mind to look upon it directly. By the void, whispered Tarn, the team's xenoarchaeologist. It's them, the unnameables. Before anyone could react, a psychic assault slammed into their minds. Blackwood's augmentations barely shielded her from the onslaught, but she saw her human teammates collapse, blood trickling from their ears. Through the haze of pain, she managed to activate the emergency beacon. As consciousness slipped away, her last thought was of Admiral Stryker and the terrifying truth they had uncovered. Aboard the Indomitable, Stryker received Blackwood's distress signal. Her face hardened as she digested the implications of the lieutenant's discovery. All hands battle stations, she ordered, her voice steady despite the dread coiling in her gut. We're about to face an enemy beyond our comprehension. As the coalition fleet assembled, reports flooded in from across the sector. Entire worlds going dark, their populations vanishing without a trace. The unnameables had begun their harvest. On the bridge of the Indomitable, Stryker watched the tactical display with iron will. The enemy vessels defied standard detection methods, appearing and disappearing at will. Multiple breaches detected in sectors 3 through 7, reported Commander Hassan. They're tearing holes in reality itself. Stryker's mind raced, weighing impossible choices. Every option before her led to unthinkable losses. But as she saw coalition worlds blink out of existence one by one, she knew there was only one path forward. Initiate Protocol Omega, she commanded. We end this now, whatever the cost. As the order went out, the full might of the Coalition Armada surged into action. Ships of every size and configuration, from a dozen different species, moved as one. Their weapons charged, preparing to unleash a fury that would shake the very foundations of space-time. In the void between stars, the battle for existence itself was about to begin. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.